Hello there folks, hope you're all keeping well. In this video I'm going to be talking about my top 5 British and Irish Lions bolters of all time. Of course feel free to leave your comments down below of what are your favourite bolters in Lions history. Now without further ado, here is my top 5. At number 5 it's John Bentley who went on the 1997 Lions tour to South Africa. The Yorkshire born winger picked up two caps for England in 1988 before converting to Rugby League. He returned to Rugby Union in 1996 signing for Newcastle Falcons. His form for Newcastle that season as well as the fact he'd been playing professional rugby for the five years prior to joining Newcastle at Rugby League which put him in good stead to be considered for the 1997 tour as it was the first professional tour the Lions had. Despite being overlooked by England for the 1997 Five Nations Tournament, 1997 selectors Ian McGeechan and Jim Telmfer deemed him good enough to go on the tour to South Africa. Age 30 at the time and not being in the England side drew criticism from some, but John Bentley answered his critics with some great performances on the tour, as well as his infectious and upbeat character having more than a positive impact on the rest of the squad. His footwork, pace and intelligence in the games prior to the the test matches put him into contention to be considered for the tests. His most notable efforts coming against the Gauteng Lions where he scored an absolutely fabulous try where he got the ball in his own half and he beat every defender going to go over and score under the post. He did enough to earn himself a spot on the bench for the first test but unfortunately for him he didn't get on in that game. But Yian Evans picked up an injury in that first test which opened the door for John Bentley to be starting the second test. The second test of course the Lions sealed a famous series win thanks to Jeremy Guscott's late drop goal. Bentley was an integral part in the series win both on and off the pitch. It's just unfortunate for him that he was never able to establish himself in the England international team afterwards. He won two caps in the 1997 autumn series but later fell out of favour with Clive Woodward. He was considered surplus to requirements for England so he switched back to rugby league in 1998 and retired from rugby altogether in 1999. His contribution to that successful series in 1997 will never be forgotten. Of course it is only the second time in Lions rugby history that they've beaten South Africa in a series. At number four is Jeremy Guscott of Bath and England on the 1989 Lions Tour to Australia. Guscott won his first international cap little over a month before the first test on that tour when he scored a hat-trick for England against Romania. That along with his impressive season for Bath caught the eye of Ian McGeechan who had little hesitation in selecting him for the tour. Initially Guscott was more used as a squad player but after the Lions lost the first test 30 points to 12 Guscott was given his opportunity to start the second test. And of course Guscott produced a fantastic performance in that second test, scored a fantastic chip and chase try which won the match for the Lions 19-12. Formerly a fly half and famed for his fantastic attacking ability and footballing skills and he quickly grew a reputation as being one of the deadliest attacking centres in the game at the time. He kept his spot in the third test of that tour which of course the Lions won 19-18 and later went on to have an international career where he won 65 caps and six more caps for the Lions after that tour, forming well-balanced partnerships with Scott Gibbs in 1993 and 1997. And as I said previously, will always be remembered for that winning drop goal on the 1997 tour, which secured the Lions' second series win in South Africa ever. He retired from rugby after the 1999 World Cup and has been working in broadcasting as a pundit for the BBC since then. But it was his performances on the 1989 Lions tour that got everyone's attention and really put his name on the international stage. At number three, it's Martin Johnson of Leicester and England on the 1993 Lions tour to New Zealand. Johnson, of course, won a cap with the New Zealand under-21s three years prior before returning to the country of his birth. He established himself as one of Leicester's first-choice second rows. And in the final match of the 1993 Five Nations, he was called up late as an injury replacement for Wade Dooley. And he showed his fantastic ball-handling strength and athleticism in that game. In the 1993 
1993 tour to New Zealand, he was not selected in the initial touring party, but after an injury occurred to, again, Wade Dooley in that first test, Martin Johnson was called in and started the second test. Johnson put in an outstanding performance in that second test, which helped the Lions seal the win. Unfortunately for Johnson and the Lions in that series, the All Blacks came out firing in that third test and ended up winning the series 2-1. However, this was the start of an illustrious career for Martin Johnson. He went on to captain the 1997 Lions Tour when he was not considered a favourite for the role at all at the time. And later on, he only, well, he only just um, captained England to their 2003 Grand Slam and then later on captained them to the 2003 World Cup. I mean, not, not a big deal, that, really. That's, that's not really anything. <laughs> but it was the mark he made when he was called into that 1993 Lions Tour that established him as a great player, and he went on to become an even better player as he got older. As I said, captain in the 1997 Tour, but also captain in the 2001 Tour to Australia. He retired from international rugby after the 2003 World Cup and retired from rugby altogether in 2005. Three years later, he was appointed England head coach, where he led them to a Six Nations title win in 2011, but was well-renowned for the disappointment of the 2011 World Cup. After that World Cup, Johnson left his role as England head coach. He was mostly in the rugby wilderness for a few years after that, but these days he's now working as a co-pundit on the BBC. And despite his tough times with England as head coach, he still remains a well-respected figure in the world game of rugby union. At number two is Jason Robinson of Sale and England on the 2001 Lions Tour to Australia. Jason Robinson at the time was pretty fresh off being a rugby league convert where he had established himself as a superstar in that game. He was signed up by Sale Sharks in 2000 and made his England international debut against Italy in the 2001 Six Nations. He made three international appearances off the bench, but already showed his abilities with his hands and his feet. Nicknamed by many as Billy Wiz because of his pace and footwork, and his ability to beat defenders almost at will. He was selected for the 2001 Lions Tour by Graham Henry, and after some impressive performances in the pre-test games, it was pretty inevitable he was going to be starting that first test against the Wallabies. He didn't take long to find his feet in that test, scoring an absolutely brilliant try try where he skimmed Chris Latham on the outside and went over to score. He played in the other two tests in sadly for the Lions a 2-1 series defeat but his impact and ability on the tour was there for all to see. His ability with his pace, his footwork as I said and just an all-round excellent rugby player. He went on to establish himself as the first choice in the back three with England scoring some dazzling tries including his most famous one perhaps in the 2003 World Cup final. A year after the 2003 World Cup, Jason Robinson was named England captain, but he really struggled to refine that form that made him the superstar of both codes of the game. He was selected for the unsuccessful 2005 Lions Tour to New Zealand, and shortly after that he announced his retirement from international rugby, but he came back for England in 2007 in time to be part of the 2007 England World Cup team, which of course got to the final of that World Cup, and after that he announced his retirement from rugby altogether. But he'll always be remembered for a successful career in both codes, but it was really that 2001 Lions Tour which springboarded his international career and put his name on the world stage of Rugby Union. And at number one is Peter Dixon of the 1971 Lions Tour to New Zealand. The Harlequins flanker was uncapped by England at the time. He was selected by Carwin James who saw great ability in him, both at the breakdown and in his ball carrying in the loose. He played in three of the four tests on that tour, including scoring a try in that fourth test, where he latched on to a loose ball from a ruck and went over to score from close range. A terrier of a flanker who, after that tour, went on to win 22 caps for England, and it was really his impact on that Lions tour to their only series win against New Zealand to date, which put his name on the rugby map. And England then realised they were missing a trick by not selecting 
selected him before that tour. However, in his England career, he didn't have the sparkling success that he had on the 1971 Lions tour, but he will always be remembered as someone who basically came from the wilderness, no international rugby experience at all, and then he came into that first test and looked right at home almost straight away. He was dropped from the third test after, of course, the Lions lost the second test, but he responded really well when he was selected in that fourth test and established himself as an excellent player and a key contributor to the Lions' success of the tour that year. So that is my top five Lions bolters of all time. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you later on.